come and say she's super funny and she told me to tell you she's doing her best. Please welcome to the stage Sarah Michelson. <laughs> What the fuck is up? How are you guys? Um, so I want to tell you about my late childhood. Um, I went to a high school that was super famous for a syphilis outbreak. <laughs> every person who, every high schooler who lived in the area knew about our high school syphilis outbreak, and they always wanted to ask us about it. Anytime we went to a competition with other high schoolers, they'd be like, "Oh my God! Like you're the other people from Heritage, right? The syphilis people, right? Yeah. So do you, do you guys do you guys all have syphilis?" And it would be so insulting, because like, no, we've moved on cl to chlamydia at this point. Uh, um, but everyone from my high school is like a parent now, um, which would be less weird if I didn't just turn 22. Um, I graduated from high school in 2014. Fuck. I graduated high school in 2014, and everyone that I went to high school with is a parent. It's so hot up here. Oh, my God. Um, everyone's a parent, and they're always posting about it on Facebook, and they're always like, can somebody help me like change this kid, my kid's diaper? Does anyone know how to get better at breastfeeding? I'm like, sorry, I don't. Um, the only people who have ever sucked my titties are other grown-ups like God intended. <laughs> Guys, as you might be able to tell, my high school had a very strict and successful abstinence education program. <laughs> and I remember on the first day of class, uh, we were 15, ninth graders, walked in. The instructor comes in, shuts the door, walks up, and she's like, Raise your hand if you're not a virgin. And this one kid, he kind of like shyly puts his hand up. Like, uh, she walk, marches over to him. She's like, young man, today I am going to help you reclaim your virginity. <laughs> As if we're at an Apple store and his dick is an iPhone that has passed warranty. <laughs> Guys, they told us a lot of weird shit in abstinence class. They would say stuff like, if you have sex before marriage, you will grow up and be in a loveless, pathetic relationship, and you will have five children. Five! <laughs> and you won't be able to feed a single one of them, you dirty sluts. And I'm looking around, I'm 15, I'm like, I've got like an emo bowl cut, like all my clothes are too big or too small for my body, and I'm like, okay, that, that can't be right. That can't be right. And no one's, no one's gonna have sex with me five times. Like, <laughs> it's not happening. Um, ag again, I guess like inferring, I grew up in the South, uh, deep South. I was the only Jewish kid in school saved for my brother. Yeah. <laughs> go, go tribe. <laughs> it's the only Jewish kid in school saved for my brother, so people didn't really know what to do with our bizarre and outlandish and weird and foreign culture. Um, so they would say some kind of weird stuff to us. So one of the things I heard a lot, especially when I was younger, is, uh, oh my God, Sarah, you're like so nice. I'm like so glad you didn't grow up in Nazi Germany. <laughs> That would have been like such a bummer. And I was like, oh my God, wouldn't you? I feel the same way. We should be friends. And the thing is that I know that it comes from a place of kindness. It's just a little bit weird. I don't go with people who have asthma and say, gosh, it is so great that you didn't live in 19th century London where you would have almost certainly died at a young age from a combination of poor air quality and tuberculosis. Let's get drinks. Woo! <laughs> The other thing uh, that I would hear, uh, especially as kids got older and started going to Bible camp, was, um, oh my God, Sarah, you're like so nice. It's like such a shame that you're gonna have to burn in hell for all of eternity. <laughs> like, I'll pour one out for you with Jesus up in heaven where I will be and you will not. Uh, so I guess in an attempt to save me from this horrific fate, I would get invited to these kind of stealth conversion ceremonies at, at the churches, uh, which luckily I could never attend because it always conflicted with my synagogue's mandatory blood sacrifice rituals. <laughs> That's a joke, y'all. <laughs> Please don't leave here and do something anti-Semitic or I will have to stick the cabal on you. <laughs> um, I'm here doing comedy because uh, my self-esteem sucks. Uh, I need to do something that kind of gives me affirmation every 15 seconds or so, you know? <laughs> Just like that, keep doing that. Um, and I was thinking the other day that I should really stop going for self-love and settle for something a little bit more realistic, like uh, self-friends with benefits. <laughs> because then I can continue to not care about my emotional well-being while continuing to also fuck myself over. <laughs> Uh, guys, I, uh, I really love astrology. I love astrology um, because I have a wide variety of personality flaws and I love not having to take any kind of responsibility for them whatsoever. 
if my professor is asking me where my paper is, all I have to do is remind him that I'm a Gemini moon and a, a, a stellium or something. <laughs> it's great. Um, as someone with low self-esteem, I do read a lot of women's magazines. Um, and every once I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I read a lot of women's magazines, and every once in a while, I'll see like a spread, and it'll have like all these women, and it'll have some self-congratulatory caption that's like, "We didn't Photoshop any of our models," and I'm like, "How the fuck is that supposed to help me?" Now I just know that they're naturally hotter than I'm ever gonna be. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Um, I mentioned something about a professor. I'm in college. <laughs> fuck me. Um, I'm in college. Um, I go to Wellesley College, and yeah. Uh, some of my friends are here. Thank you. <laughs> if um, if you're familiar with anything about Wellesley College, you may know that we have an alum that is very active in the political world. Uh, her name is Jana Ryan, uh, wi wife of, of Senator Paul Ryan. And, uh, and if you know anything else about Wellesley, you'll know that one of the things they sell you on when you go there is the network that's like the biggest, most powerful women's network in the world. And we have lots of networking events, and we meet with lots of alums and to talk with them. And if, always really hoped that we would run into Jana Ryan at one of the networking events so I could ask her how she fucks someone who's that flaccid. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm on the school's rugby team, which is really fun. Yeah. yeah. I fucked out of time for comedy. Who knows? I don't know. Um, I'm on the rugby team, and when I started doing it, um, my mom was like, why are you doing that? Um, have you looked in a mirror? You're about five feet tall, and I don't think you could push a brick over if you tried. And I was like, no, no, it's because like, I have to get in shape, you know? And she's like, you should do yoga like a normal person, you know? And I was like, no, you don't understand. Like, if I don't get in shape for rugby, I will literally die. <laughs> That's how much I hate exercise. Like, if it's the choice between exercise and the slow, gaping maw of oblivion, it, like, it comes down to like a wire for me. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. Um, I'm on my period right now. Um, <laughs> finally, some cheers for that. Um, I'm on my period right now, and I hate talking to my f other friends who have periods uh, because they always say that, like, oh, my God, like, I can deal with my entire period on four or five pads. And I'm like, that's so cute. Quentin Tarantino personally directs my vagina every single month. <laughs> and, guys, I'm going to cry and crowdsource here. That's usually my closer, but I'm trying to come up with a, with a good uh, tag for that now that Quentin Tarantino is a confirmed piece of shit. Um, so if you have any suggestions, meet me after the show. See you later. Bye. <laughs>